The Cloward Piven strategy was developed by Richard Cloward and Francis Piven in the 1960s. It outlines a strategy for radical social change by way of abusing the system to the point of destruction. You know, we were associated with the social work tradition, which said that the programs worked as they were supposed to work. But they didn't work as they were supposed to work. And it was out of that realization, that insight, that we developed the strategy to end poverty, which called for a massive mobilization of social workers and lawyers and organizers to get people the benefits to which they were entitled. We were proposing a kind of movement that demanded what people were already entitled to by law, by regulation, by propaganda. The primary goal of the Cloward Piven strategy is to create a political and economic crisis that would destroy capitalism and lead to the implementation of a socialist system with a guaranteed income. The strategy involves enrolling large numbers of people into the welfare system, as many people as it takes to overwhelm and strain the system until it collapses. Everyone enrolled into the welfare system is also used as an army to carry out the destruction of the current system. They are registered to vote and instructed on how to vote. They are organized and mobilized and made to appear as grassroots organizations demanding more from the system. The ideal outcome of the Cloward Piven strategy is to collapse the current system. According to their theory, this will compel the government to implement a universal basic income, which would then shift the U.S. towards a more socialist system with increased government control over the economy. Everyone is being encouraged to do it. Burn it down is the new sexy ring. In high school, they compare it to the American Revolution. The Cloward Piven strategy is a political gambit designed to overwhelm the American government by placing so many demands on the bureaucratic structure that it collapses. It's sort of a shock and awe campaign, a surprise attack on entrenched systems meant to force major changes to the ways that things are handled by the government. It may be messy, but it does harken back to a fundamental ideology of the American Republic. If it ain't fixed, break it. All of this explains the likes of AOC. We, what people like AOC are doing, what the squad is doing is really very important, very important. But at the same time, there, there is this movement which is so big. It's Some people say it's the biggest movement in American history. It's hard to know because it's hard to measure a movement. But it is big and it is interracial and it penetrates into every small town. I now am in upstate New York. The town I'm closest to has maybe 2,000 people. You know, we have little demonstrations in front of the post office for Black Lives Matter. And this is Trump country. Nevertheless, there is a Black Lives Matter demonstration. So it's a very potent and important moment in American political development. And we have to make the most of it because if we don't, we don't know what's going to happen, but it's not going to be good. The official way to immigrate into the United States is very similar to most countries. File an immigrant petition with the government and upon approval, apply for a visa. You will then have to maintain a productive status for several years if you want to consider citizenship. But there is a new system now in place. This new system is not official, nor is it legal and it's being done by thousands of government employees who have sworn an oath to uphold the U.S. Constitution. And yet, here they all are, submitting to the United Nations agenda and committing treason. On the Mexico side, Mexican immigration officers lead crowds of people to crossing points at the border. <laughs> Yeah.
On the American side, government workers wait for the cover of darkness, and in the middle of the night, federal employees begin processing the large crowd with mobile devices. Middle schools are used as processing centers. Buses are backed in past the media as Border Patrol use government vehicles to try blocking the cameras from filming the migrants being loaded on board and brought into the country. The migrants are given mobile phones as a digital form of ID, bus tickets, debit cards, and court dates set four years from now. There are no checks or balances in this new de facto immigration system, and it's turning thousands of government workers into traitors to their own country. We Americans are under attack by our own government. We the people have no choice but to once again defend our freedom. This has all happened before, and we can learn much from the American Revolution. Starting in 1763, to pay for debts incurred from a war with France, the British began enforcing new taxes on the American colonies. In response to this, the colonies set up their own parallel government, based on a simple structure of three committees delegated to voice the will of the people. A committee of correspondence to disseminate information, a committee of inspection to enforce Continental Congress decisions, and the most important of the three, a committee of safety to act as general executive in the absence of legal authority. These committees stemmed from each community of all the colonies, and each and every local committee of safety had two missions, to provide military support and monitor political affairs. Each community delegated its own representatives to speak on their behalf at the county level and then at the state level, where state legislatures are thereby formed and senators are elected to represent the overall interests of the people in that state. With these committees, the 13 colonies honorably created a parallel government that lawfully nullified British rule. This compelled the Crown to take it back by force, which was met by an honorable and lawful defense of the colonies, known as the American Revolution. The three committee structure that made up this parallel government inspired our U.S. Constitution, a concept of government based upon delegation. Individuals were not elected to rule. Their only purpose was to facilitate and implement the will of the people. It was a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Each state was considered to be its own country, which was freely subordinating aspects of its own authority to a federal government. Lawfully speaking, this has never changed, but the federal government of the United States has become bloated with loyalists to the city of London and enemies of we the people. For well over a century, we the people have been coerced into becoming voluntary slaves to a multinational corporate power structure, which has increasingly dumbed us down more and more with each generation. Unconstitutional amendments have been enacted Constitutional limits of representation have been ignored, and by accepting Federal Reserve banknotes, we have made ourselves a dishonorable nation of debtors. By continually contracting with the corporate U.S. being operated out of the Washington, D.C. city-state, Americans are perpetually surrendering their constitutional sovereignty in return for corporate benefits. We share a common enemy with our founding fathers. Today we call them globalists. Back then, they called them British, a foreign power exploiting the will and destiny of Americans. And back then, their remedy was the Committee of Safety. This is happening again today. Communities are forming their own Committees of Safety. An excellent example is Santa Rosa County, Florida, where the Recall Florida movement sprang from which seeks to empower the citizens of Florida with the ability to recall county commissioners for corruption, malfeasance, and neglect of duty. The county sheriff is charged with upholding the supreme law of the Constitution, and with your county government in line with your county sheriff, 
citizens of that county will have the lawful parallel government they need to liberate themselves from contracts made with the corporate U.S. because the powers held by the sheriff supersede those of any government official when in the jurisdiction of that county. The PSYOP today is meant to make you feel dependent upon the federal government, but that has always been your choice. And it's not the only choice. You can contact your local sheriff and ask him about his oath to uphold the Constitution. You can form committees of safety, and you can lawfully purge your local government of corruption. But it requires action, and time is quickly running out.